Oh no. Hello everybody, my name is Beckett, and welcome back to Enigmatica 6. Uh, okay, where to begin? Um, this thing works now, and I lost a bunch of footage. <laughs> I had to, uh, I had to do a bunch of stuff, basically. Like, I had to update the mod, and to do that I had to run Curse as an Administrator, and it turns out when you do that, the OBS hotkeys stop working. So, uh... We used it just the way they had it last time. Um, there's nothing wrong with the way they had it set up to make the Sylph charm. And the Sylph is now making happy particles around all of this stuff, which in turn is depositing items into our chest. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that uh, the items in our chest here... will go automatically into our storage drawer system. And let's see, we can just run it right down here, right? Alright, we'll be back. Alright, we just gotta get in here with our uh, configurator. And there we go. But, uh, what do we have down here? Slate pavement. Slate pavement. So, what this little girl is going to do for us is uh, she's going to put all kinds of things into our, uh, our chest here. And then our items are going to pump down a basic logistical transporter into this storage drawer system. We'll be able to see exactly what we have of everything. And it's pretty cool. Now, for the moment, we will have to occasionally harvest this stuff by hand to keep generating mana for our girl here, because uh, the plan was I did make the silk charm, or the web charm, I mean, uh, once we got uh, that thing working. I apologize for losing that footage, but we I couldn't seem to... Uh, to get uh, a spell on the parchment. He made this scribe's table last time and went and made this uh, blank parchment with the mana fiber that you get from, uh, from the mana seeds that we made. And what you're supposed to be able to do is put the blank parchment down there and then you're supposed to uh, be able to take your spell book and pick the spell you want and sneak right click it onto the parchment, but that, that just doesn't seem to work, and casting the spell from a distance doesn't seem to work, um, so I don't know, uh, maybe it's the projectile aspect of it that doesn't work, whoops, we forgot to, uh, Projectile? No, no, we don't want projectile, we want touch, create, and it just, uh, it just doesn't do. We're supposed to be able to give it to the whelp and have the whelp cast the spell. I was going to have the whelp cast harvest in an area around uh, them, have the carbuncles pick that stuff up, but it doesn't look like that's, uh, it doesn't look like that's on the menu. Alright, I might have figured this out. Um, uh, said blank parchment in the thing, I'm sure, but there's a spell parchment that we can make with the uh, mana gems. And maybe I misread it, or maybe, uh, who knows. But if this works, I'm going to be, uh, a very happy spell inscribed. Did it say that? And I was just missing it the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to feel pretty silly. Where would it be? It'd be in the machines, right? Scribe's table. And spell parchment. You may also write a spell to spell parchment. So I made blank parchment, and I didn't catch that we needed spell parchment. So that's, you know, that is what it is. So now that we've got it, I think we just right-click the, uh, the wealth, and okay, spell set. So the next thing we want to do is uh, stumble our way through this. We're going to make a carbuncle charm. Um, for 
For that, we're going to need the carbuncle shards, which we got from given the carbuncle we found in the wild, a gold nugget. We're going to need five gold nuggets, two mana gems, and a diamond. Alright, so this will be cool. I'll actually get to see this thing in action on camera. So our carbuncle charm is just our uh, five gold nuggets. We want a diamond, two mana gems. We'll throw our carbuncle charm, shift right click, just what we did for 10 minutes last episode. <laughs> and we'll get our carbuncle charm. Now this, we just, uh, like our notebook says, we just use it on the ground and uh, it'll pick up nearby items. Uh, we can use a dispel on it, we can use allow or deny to, uh, and you can pick up different things, but we don't really need to do any of that. Um, what we are going to do is uh, get our hoe out first. Because we're going to want something for our friend here to harvest. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. Delicate little things, aren't they? Um, let's, uh, projectile heal is going to come in handy. Nice! So, we'll just grab, uh, grab a little bit of this here. Alright. We'll uh, throw some potatoes down. We'll throw some beetroot down. We'll throw some carrots down. And as these mature, one thing I forgot, we want to, uh, position set. So I right-click the carbuncle with the Dominion Wand, and then I shift-right-click on the chest, and I think, uh, I think that did it. Alright, let's give it a try. Okay, I think it has to be within a block of their summoning crystal for them to see. Yeah? Carbuncle, are you going to pick it up for us? Carbuncle's going to pick it up. You going to take us to the chest? Are you? Doesn't look like it. I'm picking something else up. You're going somewhere. Alright. Let's check out our Dominion Wand. Use the wand on the object that you would like to take mana from. Hmm. That doesn't seem quite right. Let's uh, go back to our Carbuncle Charm here. Use the Dominion Wand on the inventory, and then on the Carbuncle. Okay. So we've used it on the inventory. Now we use it on the Carbuncle? No, I don't want to take from the inventory. How do I get it to take items to an inventory? Alright, so we click on our carbuncle, right? Hold still. Stored entity. Not this chest, but this chest. Carbuncle will store items here. Alright. So as these grow, and our friend the well harvests them, the growth tick will generate mana going to our mana jar. Now let's make sure our whelp here understands that it gets the mana from the mana jar. Um, by default, we have every spell. Jars that are in the vicinity of the summoning crystal, so we don't have to set that up. What about for the sylph? Uh, sylph will follow animals, we summon a sylph, do this, do that. 
Mood is determined by number of diversity of natural materials in the use block, value diversity. Interacting with Sylph and Empty Hand will give you additional info on their mood. A happy Sylph will generate items and blocks. So, okay. They do require world mana that's in a jar adjacent to the summoning crystal, which we have. So we're pretty much set. Let's see what our Sylph will tell us. If we can find her. Um, we click on her with an empty hand. The Sylph appears happy enough. Home is extremely diverse. So we're going to put a bunch of other stuff over here where it's just like basically home kneeling the ground for us. Since the uh, recording for uh, this part of it never got made, I thought I'd give him the mechanics of the Sylph a little bit. Um, let's go into our, uh, our worn notebook here. Well, what you do is uh, you, you use your enchanting apparatus to craft this stuff. It was uh, a little more of a pain to get the birch sapling than it was to get anything else. Um, what we did to do that was uh, make this guy over here, which is from the Farming for Blockheads mod. It's not hard to make. Um, let's see, yeah, here it is. It's just a red wool, some planks, and you get this guy. And for an emerald, he will sell you stuff. And he's quite handy, he's very friendly. Uh, but what you have to do is you have to uh, craft this summoning crystal, which is not uh, not a particularly hard recipe. It's, uh, again, you use the enchanting apparatus, some gold, two diamonds, a mana gem, and some of this arcane stone. And... The summoning crystal with the mana jar and the chest is in fact a multi-block. Um, it shows it to you right here, and you can click this little eye to uh, see a ghost image of it in the world, which is pretty cool. It's how this, uh, this book mod just kind of seems to work. I think it might be patchouli? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, once you've got it set up, the, uh, the silk just kind of goes and does its thing. I don't know that it actually needs mana to do it. We're going to find out, <laughs> because the bulk of the mana is being used by this crystallizer to make us the, uh, the mana gems. Now, I don't, I don't know any of this for a fact, but if this is the next day in real life after recording... Uh, the previous part of this episode, so I've had a little time to think about it. Um, the issue might be with the way the uh, the enchanting apparatus reads the drops that you get from the Enigmatica. Enigmatica I can barely speak right now. Um, from this mod, however it's pronounced. Um, because when we started to, when I once I updated the mod and then started using the crystallizer with world mana to make the mana gems, the enchanting apparatus suddenly began to function. So what I know for a fact is that as it stands with the mod updated and with the enchanting apparatus, uh, with, with the ore the way that it is, well, I'll just demonstrate instead of talking about it. Oh, for crying out loud. Come on. Come on. Come on. Kidding me with this. This is not a country inn. Come on. Both here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, for crying. Come on. Anyway, um, let's say we want to make mana bloom seeds. Now you can look it up in uh, your your book, your worn notebook, or you can look it up in JI, which is quite nice. So you need uh, four mana gems. Now if you do it, with uh, the mana gems that I got from your drops before updating the mod. I didn't update Enigmaticus or whatever it is. 
Um, I just updated ours new so we put this in here. You sneak right click, you got what we got the whole last episode, right? Now you take the mana gems from the crystallizer, sneak right click, and everything works just fine. And you get your mana boom speed. Throw that in there. Now, the way the wealth works, um, what you have to do, first, into your enchanting apparatus, you, you make the recipe. You have to craft an auto spell before. It's just another thing that you, uh, you put on the pedestals. You do get this as a reward for one of the quests. You get the wealth charm. And you use it on another one of those summoning crystals. But then you have to give it... Let's see if we have any up here. We do. Then we end up with a pretty good automated system out here. Um, we've got the multi-block. It's not clear to me that the Sylph is actually using the mana. I think I might have said that already. Um, she certainly seems happy flying around. We're going to make some adjustments, though, to the way this is set up. Um, we're getting a good amount of vanilla crops just from this little setup here. And I want to get some more trees going. Now, are these still all at 30? Okay, no. We've got uh, a mango at 14, a pear at 14 now. So I think we only have 13 of all the fruit in there. Is it mango that's... Uh, is there ripe mango over here? Cherries are ripe. Oranges are ripe. I guess we'll see. I'm not super clear if the soap is actually harvesting the fruit off the trees here. Um, it's definitely getting, we're definitely getting saplings and wood. So, what I want to do is probably get rid of all of this and put some, uh, put some more trees down so we can use this as a wood farm also. Okay, yeah, we're definitely getting fruit off the trees, so that's pretty cool. So one thing I just learned, like you'll notice this chest is nearly full, but draining very quickly. When the, when the soap generates items, it generates a whole bunch at once. <laughs> um, it just comes boom. Um, oh, wait a while. See, yeah, yeah, like it, it's like that. Um, now I don't know if it would make a difference if we uh, made a double chest over there. I don't know if it would deposit into it. I think we just used a, a vanilla chest for the sake of the, uh, the multi-block. I'm not sure if the gorg chest would work or not, but just in case we used a vanilla chest. Okay, so it's pointed that way, so we'll have to if we can... No, that doesn't work. Still not super clear on the new chest mechanics, though. So. Alright. So we're draining, we're draining. We may want to upgrade the, the logistical transporters when we have the opportunity. Now, you notice we're getting an awful lot of dark oak. And what that makes me think is that because there's a lot of dark oak blocks there from the, the whole entire tree. Yeah, boom. Okay, so it, it will use the, uh, the rest of the chest. Now we know. I wonder if we could just place uh, all kinds of wood blocks out here and it would just regenerate the wood. Um, it will do flowers. It will do modded flowers. Um, no and modded. Uh, and we're we're trucking right along. We've only got the one sylph. Um, I'd imagine the rates would improve if we added additional sylphs. I did take the uh, the crystallizer uh, back upstairs, and our mana jar is is full again. It filled up very quickly, so our sylph will, or our wealth over here will have plenty of mana to uh, cast its harvest with. Not that we need it, apparently. Um, and we could probably replace all this over here with uh, just more stuff. Alright, so what I'd like to do now that this is working um, is take a look at 
the rest of the Ars Nouveau quest line. Now, Mythical Clay, well, the Archmage spell book, we, we can't quite do that yet. We need to go to the end. But let's look at uh, the trinkets so we can make an Amulet of Mana Regen or a Ring of Lesser Discount. So let's look at uh, the Amulet. So we've got Mana Boost. Mana regen. This is what it wants us to make. So two diamonds, two gold, four mana gems, and a dull trinket, which we've already gotten as a reward. Alright, so we'll just uh, place the components, the four mana gems, the diamonds, and the gold on our pedestals. We'll throw the uh, dull trinket. And you can craft these if you haven't, if you lost it, or whatever. It's just one of these mana gems. It looks like you can use the Enigmatis one. Um, and four iron ingots, or nuggets, I'm trying to say. Alright, just throw it in the apparatus. You shift right click. And eventually we get our amulet of mana regen. Now, uh, let's take a look, uh, let's take our projectile light spell, and let's I'll go about lighting some of this random area up. So you see, we have one, two, three, four. So we have sixty right now, and that's the rate at which we're regenerating mana. Bump, 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 bump. So let's go into our whatever this menu is. Um, we'll clip the amulet, and we'll see now. I mean, maybe, maybe it's a little faster. Let's see what uh, let's see what reward we got. Oh, we still got to do the ring of lesser discount. Anyway, it's easy enough. Um, I think we've got. Oh, I just don't have fiber up here. I thought I did. Look at this guy. He must be on break. Oh, also double height flower harvesting from this is uh, not confirmed. All right, let's finish that one up at least. Do, 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 do. Boom. The blind parchment, and then we'll make the spell parchment. Like so. And did that do it? Oh, I know we have three. Do I have. Oh, I could have only made two. Okay. Interesting the... Oh, okay, summer plan. Let's see what we got. The scribing table, that's right. We already have one of these. So, up next in the quest here, we got a mana relay, runic chalk, mana splitter. What is mana relay? We get, uh, I think, another Dominion staff for that. Um, so the mana relay is just gold and mana chest, so that's fine. But uh, we may catch up to that another day. This might not turn out to be a very long episode, but it's been a very long one to record with uh, all the messing around with the mod and updates, trying to figure it out and losing all that footage, which... Uh, which, you know, lesson learned, lesson learned. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, thanks for your patience, and we'll uh, probably see you in 2021. Bye. Bye-bye.